perfect, perfect. Set this up a bit better here. You see what I'm doing? Oh, perfect. There's Nikki. There's my table. Get you right in frame there. Okay. All right, guys, thanks for coming. I'm Katrina, and today I'm going to be demonstrating and going over the process of collecting blood samples, also known as vena puncture. And these are standards according to OSHA and World Health Organization. And Nikki has graciously volunteered for me so I can demonstrate on her. Actually, I kind of conned her into doing it, but that's fine. <laughs> All right, so the first thing you're going to do when you enter the room is you're going to introduce yourself. Smile, be nice. Hi, I'm Katrina, and I'm going to do your lab work today. Um, introducing yourself is very important. I remember once I had a time I went and got my blood drawn, not here, full bottom extended smile, she didn't introduce her herself and it kind of made an overall unpleasant experience. Um, after you introduce yourself, you're going to verify your patient's name and birthday with your doctor order. You want to make sure you actually have the correct patient. So the last thing you want to do is draw the wrong labs on the wrong person. <laughs> okay. So um, next you can go ahead and sanitize your hands, either with hand sanitizer or wash your hands for 20 seconds with soap and water. And you're gonna have your patient turn the wrist up so you can see the inside of the arms. You can look for some obvious veins. There's three main ones we're looking for. We're gonna look for the cephalic, which is right around here, your median cubital and your basilic. Okay, so um, what I like to do first is I'm gonna put the tourniquet on. All right, go ahead and relax your arm. Not too tight, but you want it about three fingers above the site. That was awful. Hold on. <laughs> three fingers above the site you'll be drawing. There we go. And then you're going to go ahead and palpate for a vein. Make sure it has a good amount of bounce back so you know when you go to draw from it, it's not going to collapse on you. Okay, then you go ahead and release your tourniquet. You go ahead and get your supplies ready. Over here, I have the correct order of draw. Um, depending on what test you're going to be doing, you won't use all of these, obviously. Sometimes you do. So we have blood cultures that we would be drawing first. We have a plain red top. This has no additive. Then we have a blue, tiger, green, and purple. And the reason we do the correct order to draw is to prevent additive carryover from one tube to the next. Okay, so we're going to go ahead, put our gloves on. and put our supplies together. So here I just have a hollow point needle and I'm gonna put it into this Vaccutainer holder. <clears throat> have that ready. And what you're gonna do is you're going to clean your selected site with some alcohol. You're gonna clean it in a circular motion. So start from the inside and go out in this way. You're not recontaminating your site and getting dirt or bacteria back into the site you're going to draw from. You're going to let that dry. Do not blow on it. Do not leave it because that'll just recontaminate your site. Also, it's important to let that alcohol draw so or dry so you um, it kills all the bacteria. And also, if it's still wet when you pulse that patient, it's going to stink. So that's not very comfortable either. I'm going to have you hold that for a second since my table is all here. So for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna do this. I like to put my tube in my back container, not press it on, but have it sitting there. I'm gonna put this tourniquet back on. My gloves always get stuck. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna pull down that safety shield. I'm not gonna uncap it. But you're going to uncap it, you're going to stabilize that vein with your thumb, and you're going to go in at a 30 degree angle with the bevel of that needle up. Okay, get out all your tubes you need, um, and you use these little flangies here to pull it off and push it back on. You want to mix your tubes immediately after drawing, especially if it has an anticoagulant in it, because if you don't mix immediately, then it's going to form a clot in there, um, and also form platelet something, which makes it unacceptable for analysis. Okay, after you have all the tubes you need, you want to pop that tourniquet. You also don't want to let that tourniquet be on longer than a minute because that'll cause hemoconcentration, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's concentration of the blood and it can elevate all of your patient lab results. So if they have a critical low value, it can actually elevate it to look normal. If they have a normal value, it can elevate it to look abnormal. All right, and so you're going to pull that out and you're going to apply 
pressure for about 30 seconds to a minute. And the patient can usually take over and hold that there, or if you have assistant, they can do it too. And after you do that, you're gonna activate your safety shelf and put that in a sharps container immediately. Do not rake out needles, cause that'll, that puts you more at risk for a finger stick. Accidental needle poke. Okay, hold that there. And usually when they are holding that, um, what I like to do is I like to come over here and label my tubes. So I put their first name, last name, date of birth, where I got them at. So that would be her left anti-cubital, the time of the draw, and my initials. Um, we also do have pre-filled out labels. So the only thing I would have to put on there is my time, initials, and where I got them at. Okay, so after you have labeled those, it's probably been a minute or so. Come over, recheck this site. If it's done bleeding, you can use a clean piece of gauze. Usually I'd put that on table, but I don't have one close enough right now, or in my phlebotomy chair. And we're going to tape it, instruct the patient to leave that on for about 15 minutes to ensure clotting and keep that fresh wound clean. Okay, so that's the straight needle. I'm not done with you yet. You can just stay here for a second. <laughs> Okay, so there is also another way to draw, and a lot of you have probably heard of that, and it's with a syringe and a butterfly, and it's called a butterfly because it has these little wings on here. Um, we usually use these for kids or hard to find veins or fragile veins, and some adults request it too, although there's not much different in the gauge size. Like this is probably, this is a 22 gauge and this is a 25 gauge. So the only difference with this is when you go in, you'll have a flashback of blood so you can see that you're in a vein. And you're gonna wanna pull that syringe back slowly and steady. Don't force that plunger back because what that does is it will break apart the red blood cell causing hemolysis. And that'll also, if it's grossly hemolyzed, we can't use it for analysis because it'll elevate things like potassium, liver enzymes, and it'll also lower your red blood cells. Okay, again, you would activate the safety shield on this and put it in the sharps container. Um, thank you, patient, for coming. And get your samples to the lab immediately for analysis. Okay, and that's it. Do you guys have any questions? Okay, thanks, guys.